again. Hi, yay. Thank you so much. My name is Miles. This is my name sign here. And I set up a, nine, a nonprofit, which is called Sima Space. This is the sign for that. And the nonprofit, our goal is to set up events that involve culture and art and that involve both the deaf and hard of hearing community here in Portland and the hearing community. So I've created a number of different art and technology projects such as the lights that you can see here. And I've, I've made a bunch of different art projects such as this and you can see some at the museum at OMSI and there was also a Grammy Award presentation performance you can see here and that Esperanza Spalding is the name of the performer there and you can see my lights are in the background and then right OMSI there was also a, a, an installation that involved things I've created. So I also set up something called the Northwest Deaf Arts Fest, and that happened this year. And there will be another one next year, that's the hope. And we're going to be inviting different artists, different deaf artists, and poets, dancers, deaf musicians, and all sorts of people like that to the community here in Portland. That's our goal next year. Now, here's where everything started going way back. So I was born deaf and you can see here I was actually not born deaf and you can see the audiogram charts here. It shows that the high frequency um, that's something that I'm not able to hear. You can see that I am able to hear some really low frequencies. Vibrations are what I will sense first before those low frequencies. Now normal, what they call normal hearing, that range, you can compare the two charts here, the left and the right sides there. Now deafness, uh, what is that? Does anybody know? I'm just curious about people's different thoughts about what deafness actually means. So there's a medical perspective and a label, you know, the label, oh, this person can't hear, that's what deafness means. But the deaf community doesn't focus on that word, can't. The deaf community focuses on culture and what the benefits are of deafness. It's a really different perspective and it has to do with what is actually, what people are actually doing. Now, some deaf people, they, make the decision to, um, there is a decision you can make to be, to have your hearing assisted. So a cochlear implant, for example, was not an option that worked for me. It wasn't available. But so my inner ear, there's, um, so the cochlear implant, as I was saying, that wasn't an opportunity for me based on the kind of issues I had inside my ear. Um, so I decided to learn sign language and become involved in deaf culture and that's been a different approach. Now, um, yeah, let's see here, got some. So going back to the original space. So I moved here to Portland, that was six years ago now. And I set up this nonprofit. And the reason was because I was really frustrated trying to look for different opportunities to perform and be involved with makers and also musicians here in the community in Portland. It was a real struggle to access that scene. And you know, it's largely because people don't sign or know ASL. So I was trying to figure out how to solve communication barriers and breakdowns. I realized that I needed to help myself, so I decided to start that nonprofit. And the goal is communicating with deaf, hard of hearing, and hearing communities. Everyone can be involved. 
there was not anything here for that, so I decided to do it myself. Now, I'm a musician myself, as you saw, I play guitar, and there are, I was wondering what are the different approaches that could help someone understand or comprehend in a way music if they're not able to access sound as we know it. So I started designing and drawing some different drafts and trying to be creative about this issue. So I, would, I could plug in my guitar and was thinking, oh, what about like a light or a vibration that corresponded with that sound? So I have been involved in the maker community and I was asking around, hmm, how might this be able to be made? So I did get a lot of help. Um, I don't really have a background with electronics or computer programming. So that was something I needed to ask the community here for. You know, how do I do these things? How do I make this happen? Okay, so in 2011, I made this. This is the first product, the first prototype of this particular project. Now this has to do with sound, connecting it with electricity, and then the lights, the LED lights here, respond to that sound. And then let's see, moving on. Now this is kind of funny, and the reason for that is, is the Portland Art Museum, they invited me to be involved in their exhibit, and it, just, it showcased different artists. So this was the first prototype here, and it didn't really, it wasn't super well made to be honest, but so it was kind of funny to have it set up in this fancy box here as part of the exhibit. Now, Cymaspace, the name originated from the uh, study called Cymatics. Now that has to do with observing, it's, it's a science, it's a scientific study of how sound becomes visible, how it can be made visible. Now in the 1970s, there were some pioneering, there was pioneering work done. This person took pictures of what, how sound was made visible using water and light, and it was very inspirational for him and also for me when I learned about this. So the name, Cymaspace came from this study of cymatics. So cymatics started really quite a long time ago from Ernst Kaladny. He was a scientist and he was really sometimes called the father of sound or the father of acoustics. He experimented with metal rings and would hit them and see the different vibrations that could happen. And there were different patterns and shapes that were created. And this was, this actually helped with viol violin makers, luthiers, with how they set up their instruments and tuned them and how the different vibrations would come out of that instrument. This was a helpful tool for that. And this, these are called the Kaladni figures here. You can see different shapes are a result of different vibrations and different sounds. Now this shape here is what became the Cymaspace logo. This was the, the, first, the first pattern that you'll see when something, when sound is vibrating in this way. Now, more recently, there have, there's been some new cymatics. So in modern cymatics, cameras are also used. And as you can see in this image here, there's a projection of water and the water will vibrate from electrical sounds and signals through a microphone or other means. Now, sound, that's another question. What actually is sound? It's not a linear, stable, flat thing. It has a shape to it. So something, what happens is, say I clap, for instance, there are sound waves that radiate out and it's not all one 
direction, it's three-dimensional or multi-dimensional, one might say. It's kind of like a bubble. So I want to use, I really want to use science and math to correspond to be able to bring sound and light in relation with one another. So I was thinking, hmm, maybe I can look at an electromagnetic spectrum such as this here. Um, you know, there are lights with a high frequency, different colors of light has a certain frequency. And that spectrum I wanted to use because different colors of light have different frequencies. Um, you might remember from like high school science classes, this light spectrum. So typically a really low frequency is red and then a high frequency that light would correspond with purple or violet. Um, so you might know ultraviolet light that is over what we can actually hear, what we're able to detect. So infrared also, that's so low that we humans are not able to sense that on our own. So I wanted to bring sound and the low high frequencies of sound into relation with color. That's what you're seeing right here. So you already saw a little bit of this, but let's just watch this again here. So it, it can be really fun to experiment with. Um, it may be work if, if everybody in the audience can make a sound together, maybe a really low sound. So let's start at a low sound, then go up to a high. We'll see. Let's see what happens. Okay. You just about ready. All right. Start low. Everybody make the sound yourself. Okay. Three, two, one. Now go high. Oh, it's not, why is nobody moving? Aren't you going to make sound? You're supposed to move. Let's move our feet. Bring the... So green represents sound being in the middle frequency, but then purple, the violet color that did display the sound getting higher. Pretty cool, right? Now, let's see. This is kind of a new approach here. So five years ago, I've been working on these things and I'm trying to kind of move up to the next level, move a little bit beyond the basics of, you know, red being low and purple, violet being high. I want to see how music has, you know, music has different notes. So that's, we all know that when you play the guitar, you can follow and figure out which key you're playing in. Here's the uh, music theory and color theory overlapping. These are how different notes correspond with each other. And then I've brought in colors also. So I can explain a little more about what that really means. Now, so this is the spectrum again. This is the full color spectrum. We've got red all the way up to purple, violet. Now, if you follow music, music theory, there are 12 notes on the scale. And if you're starting with a C, for example, D, E, F, G, H, A, B, you get up to C again, it starts over again, because it's like a circle. And you do the complete that cycle when you're going up different octaves with different notes. So let's see here, I can explain this a little bit. Now the color itself is following the note too and that cycle of different octaves in, in the scale. All right, let's see if this works. We'll see if it works right now.
let's see. It looks like it's not really working yet. Seeing nothing here. Let me try something. Yeah, I don't really know why it's not working today, um, but it seems like it's not. It did work before. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. So it's a little bit of a challenge to see it super clearly because I'm not actually connected to the guitar amp the way I usually would be to my laptop. Um, and also the sound in the room isn't exactly working, but the way that it best could. But yeah, if it is plugged in, it's so clear and it shows the different notes in the chords that are happening. Yeah, so that's the new system I've been working on. It's pretty cool and it's gonna, I want it to work for voice singing also, for vocal training. Yeah, yeah, so it, it is following pretty well, or I am excited about this as a tool for education also for kids or for people who maybe reading music doesn't really work for them like it's it's abstract in a way that's too tough like 
just black and white, that's hard for some people. But with vibration and frequencies, it works as a better approach for some people who can't really read straight from music. And also, this is helpful for improvisational uses as well. And you don't need to be a computer programmer to use it. It's, you, can, you can make music with other people. And really, this is why this is the goal behind this whole system. Because, you know, I want other musicians to be able to use it. And it can be a really clarifying tool. So yeah, I'm playing around with this a little more. I'm going to keep developing that. Okay, now many people have asked me, oh, this is so cool, I want to use it for my band or in my room, these lights, or for like a party or something. How do you set it up? So I have shared this technology, this code, and it's, it's free. People can use it. It's open source, so it's shareable. You can download it. Um, it explains how to make these different things, like, let's see like a circuit, and it's really quite simple, these, these um, things that you can download the code. So you really you just need to be patient. Um, but I'll let you know, you know, if you, if you figuring it out yourself can be tricky, but I'm trying to make it possible for people. You don't have to buy products, but you can from Audiolux. And it's really easy to just plug something right in to your equipment, as you can see here. There's just a jack and you can plug it in. And then the lights will correspond with what's happening in the box or whatever musical equipment. And that's the same as you can see this display here. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions before we're done? Hi, what's your name? It's nice to meet you. Oh, yeah. Synesthesia. I'm trying to get the full word here. It's it's. Oh, synesthesia. Yes, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So people have come up to me who have synesthesia, and they're like, "Well, this that just happens naturally for me. This technology is what happens naturally for me." So I've noticed people have different experiences with this kind of thing. So what, how they experience color or sound, it's not only one um, rule that it, it all follows. And I really don't, it doesn't make a difference to me too much which color matches which note. It's just about having a system and having a standard, figuring out how they can correlate and how I can design that. So, you know, red, to green, those are kind of the opposite. So you can see those are farther, the frequency is farther apart. But then orange, that means that it's closer together. The red and the orange, the notes are closer. So there are different approaches for mapping color. That's what I'm trying to get the main point. So if I'm doing improv guitar, it helps me figure out what chords I'm using or the harmonies that are happening, harmonics. And right, the colors will correspond with what's going on. So the harmonic sound, it'll show me if that's happening. That's the way I like to use that. But it is really difficult to follow other people's 
way of correlating color and sound because there will sometimes, if, if you go from C to D, it's really interesting because that interval, that jump, is a very different frequency and they are also separate colors. So if you play a C and a D together at the same time, it, it doesn't sound super fluid when they're played together. It's kind of tricky to explain that, but yeah, that's what I'm, that's the basics. Hopefully that's helpful. Other questions? Let's see. Hi, how are you? Hmm, well, money, money is pretty helpful, you know? <laughs> yeah, because we are a nonprofit and all nonprofits really struggle with that. I'm sure you know. Um, but right now we have, we're in the give guide through the Willamette Week. And so that's something you can look at that we just got set up with that and we're working on fundraising. So this is the first time we've been set up with that give guide. Um, so we do really appreciate any support that you can give the nonprofit through Willamette Week, the give guide. Um, so that give guide, I'm trying to think if that's like giveguide.com. I don't remember the exact website, but but yeah, that also we need volunteers. We often need volunteers. So if you're interested in that, if you have any free time, we have a workshop in, and then Southeast Portland, that's where our space is. It's actually a new work area, it's a new location. And members come and members could of our group could help you figure out what's going on and teach you different things like coding. And also you could learn about deaf culture if that's something you're interested in as well as sign language. So if any of you are interested, please go ahead, get in touch. Other questions? In the back there. So compared, do you mean like art compared with, with, um, let's see here. I'm trying to clarify your question a little bit. I'm not fully understanding. So do you mind just again saying that for me, please? Thanks. Okay, I think I, I see what you mean, what you're trying to think. So there's sound and there's light, and I don't have access, me personally, to the sound. Is that basically what you mean, and how do they interact and correlate with one another? Okay. Now, yeah, for me, I have access to a tiny little window of sound. I do, so I, so I really enjoy that. That helps me pick apart what's happening. And... For a long time, I've spent time with my guitar growing up and I was practicing and I did use vibration to help me. And as you saw in that image earlier, I would put my chin on the guitar and that would convey more information to me So I can about the sound. So I kept looking for different things like apps and things that could... There were, there were gaps still. Um, so I wanted to... Connected with your question, let's see here. So I feel like 
when all of you hear, you can think about what you do for life and work and play. And if the senses, think about all the senses that are part of those experiences. If you really think about it more, that can help to provide other people with access because they can relate with that experience of the senses and they can get more fully involved. So taste, if you think about taste and smell, there are memories you have and these memories tend to be connected with specific senses. So let's see, for instance, a roller coaster, that feeling that happens. That is a feeling of there's vibration. You see things, there is sound involved. There are all these different senses, so that helps it cement itself in your mind as a memory. Let's see, sex, that's a good one too. Um, there are many senses involved in that, right? I think that's why most people really enjoy it. Um, so that's another example. Um, so yeah, if you think about, just keep that in mind, how different senses are involved as you go about your daily life. Sight, touch, taste. And I think that really can help everyone to have a shared experience. So I think I'm out of time. Let me check here. Okay, it looks like I'm, I'm finished now, but I wanna thank all of you so much for your patience. Um, and yeah, the opportunity to, I'm pretty excited about testing out this technology here, the captioning. It's the first time I've tried it out. And yeah, if there's any feedback, um, so this is AI, this is artificial intelligence. There's not a person typing. It's just sound to uh, text, as you can see here. And it's cheaper because it's cheaper and makes it more accessible, this particular technology. Um, all right, well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.